Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another video. My name is Abby and this is Spend More Time in the Wild, a channel, a platform, a community entirely dedicated to inspiring and empowering people to get outside for the benefit of mental and physical health. Now I am here in the Cairngorms National Park in the north of Scotland. It is a beautiful crisp winter's day and the perfect time to be starting to think about getting out for the spring season backpacking through hiking long distance walking whatever you want to call it while camping anything like that and i thought well it's a very good time of year to start talking tents because tents can be really overwhelming to get your head around there's so much jargon there's so many specifications yes going lighter is better but lighter is always a compromise and many 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 and um i have been very kindly gifted <laughs> for today uh this msr hubba nx tent so this is a single person freestanding three season backpacking tent the reason why i wanted to talk about this tent today is because i see it absolutely everywhere <laughs> so i'm very well known for my long distance hiking films i do a lot of different trails every single year not just in the uk but all around the world and almost without fail i will see one of these tents on the trail the iconic green rain cover the red and white inner and i'll be like oh look there's an msr tent shocking <laughs> and there must be a good reason why these tents are so popular well i'm here to answer why in this video so my goal is not just to talk about the specifications and do a classic review video because you can read everything on the msr website is to actually talk about the usability of this tent what does it actually look like feel like how does it work in practice particularly on those longer colder wetter days on the trail because i want to make your trail life as comfortable as possible and it can be really overwhelming choosing a tent for your trail experience and hopefully this video will help you decide whether or not this is the tent that you would like to take with you for the coming season so let's get down to it. MSR stands for Mountain Safety Research. It's a USA brand, but these tents, as I say, are really popular all over the world, in the UK especially as well. Um, I have to say, I love the name Hubba. I don't know why it's called Hubba, but Hubba, Hubba, Hubba. It's just really fun to say. <laughs> um, and this is the NX version of this tent. So there have been various sort of upgrades of this tent. So when I say single person, it means it's designed for one person. Most one person tents, add a squeeze in an emergency, you can fit two people in. But then unless you really, really like sleeping on top of each other, I wouldn't advertise this as a two person tent in any way, shape or form, especially not this one. <laughs> um, so freestanding means basically it has a big pole structure going all the way around it. That means you don't need pegs in order to put it up. Now, freestanding tents can be really helpful in certain environments when it can be really hard to get pegs into the ground or when you don't even need pegs because you're in such a sheltered safe environment your tent's definitely not going to blow away so an example of where i specifically tend to take freestanding tents uh, is when i do quite remote alpine hikes so the Lorgaviga in iceland for example is a really rocky snowy environment there's lava and all sorts of weird things going on and a freestanding tent was really helpful for me because i could literally pick my tent up and move it into the most comfortable position and then i did use rocks to sort of hold down the guy lines rather than pegs because getting pegs into the ground was almost impossible so similar environments to those especially is where freestanding tents come in handy sort of desert conditions as well um, where you can just pick it up and put it down nice and easy uh three season that's the other thing i wanted to talk about before we get into the sort of facts and figures of this tent so free season is a bit of a subjective term i'm not a massive fan of the season definition structure that tent manufacturers tend to use but as a at a pinch i would basically say it's spring summer autumn so those are the conditions where you're going to be most comfortable in this tent that being said we all know that spring and autumn especially can bring very wintry conditions so I tend to say where it's better to not take this tent. It's best not to take it into extremely high winds, extremely snowy conditions, and extremely horizontally rainy conditions, <laughs> because it's going to struggle, as with most three-season tents. On the other hand, three-season tents can perform really well in those conditions if you pitch them in the right place and you pitch them very well. And a freestanding tent is going to have its advantages over a non-freestanding tent in those harsher conditions. So you instantly see what I mean, that I'm contradicting myself. The season definition is 
loose. <laughs> so when, when it comes to considering which tent you're going to buy, I would certainly start with how often are you going to be using the tent? Where are you going to be using the tent? And what are your priorities when it comes to the tent that you want to carry? Is it space? Is it weight? Is it um, the freestanding nature? What is it? Those are the things that I would list before you even start to look into a tent. But you're here to look at this tent. So let's find out more. Specifications then. So this tent weighs at it's very minimum, 1.12 kilograms, and at its very maximum, 1.25 kilograms. Why is there, why is there a difference in weight? Well, you ask, I ask as well, why? Um, when I was researching this tent and trying to find out the actual information about it, there was a lot of contradiction as to how much it actually weighs. I have not weighed this tent because I lack scales, I'm traveling at the moment, and I don't have scales in my van, <laughs> shockingly. Um, but whether it's 1.12 or 1.25, that's still pretty light for a freestanding one-person tent. Um, it's not the lightest tent out there, but as I've already mentioned, you get a lot of bang for your buck, or for your weight, <laughs> with this tent. And um, personally, what is 150 grams? 100 grams even. I don't know. It's more than, it's numbers. That's what it is. Numbers. If you want to look at the maths, if you've got your spreadsheet, if weight's really important, consider it. If it's not, ignore it. <laughs> it weighs what it weighs. You have to carry it no matter what. Now let's talk about the fabric that makes up this tent. So we have the outer fly sheet. This is made up of 20 denier ripstop nylon with a 1200 millimeter hydrostatic head. We then inside have got the ground sheet on the floor. So this is made up of 30 denier ripstop nylon with a 3000 Dura Shield hydrostatic head. And then we have the mesh on the door, which is made out of 15 denier nylon. So essentially the whole thing is nylon. Um, the denier is a term used for the density of the weave. I just try to briefly explain this as every piece of fabric is lots of uh, threads all stitched together. The lower that number, the looser the threads, the higher that number, the denser the threads. Uh, so a waterproof jacket is very often around 50 to 80 denier. It's nice and tightly woven so that it's waterproof. Now this stuff, oh, waterproof and snag proof. That's the really important bit. It's durable. This stuff being 20 and 30 denier is actually not a very thick weave. So it is treated with water repellency. So that's the DWR, durable water repellency. Um, but they have obviously slightly more reinforced the ground sheet to make it 30 denier. So it is a slightly tighter weave. I wouldn't get hung up on any, any of this stuff, but this is another thing that sort of contributes to that three season use as opposed to four season use. Four season tends to mean harsher environments, which tends to mean you need a slightly tighter weave, higher denier uh, fabric, and even more waterproofing as well. But ultimately, as I say, unless you're going out in those extreme conditions, this thing should hold up just fine. Okay, so that's a little bit about the fabrics. So now let's talk about how we actually pitch this tent. So I'm a massive fan of tents that are outer pitch first. So this is a two skin tent. This is not a single skin ultra light tent. So two skins means you've got an outer and an inner and there's a gap in between that sort of can hold heat and keep the the moisture level sort of somewhat balanced. So obviously the green is your outer and the red white stuff, this is our inner and there is a gap in between. So I'm a massive fan of tents that pitch outer first and the reason why is because very often, maybe just for me, but very often I'm putting up my tent in the rain or in misty conditions and I want to try to keep the inner part of my tent as dry as possible because that means I'm going to have a much more comfortable night so things will stay drier inside because the actual fabric that I'm sleeping in is dry. So when I pitch the outer first it means that I can sort of create my shelter, I can get into my shelter, I can get the outer out of my rucksack and I can put it up whilst I'm protected from the elements. Hopefully that makes sense, hopefully you're following. Now with an inner pitch first, like this tent, it tends to mean you put up the inner in the rain and obviously it's being rained on. So that means the rain can percolate through that fabric and into your inner, which can just mean that your actual sleeping section of the tent can be wet uh, by the time you actually come to um, put that outer on top. Now the only reason why I would prefer an inner 
pitch first as opposed to an outer pitch first is somewhere where I don't necessarily even need the outer. Those sort of drier nights where it's really nice to have maximum ventilation. So this is where, um, again, sort of drier, colder conditions can, can work really well for this type of tent. Uh, but when it comes to particularly Scottish weather <laughs> and you're pitching up in the pouring rain, I'm not a massive fan of the inner pitch first followed by the outer. That being said, this is such a simple tent to pitch. So you literally plug in the four corners of the, um, the poles onto the four corners of the outer. You've got this sort of ridge pole here at the top, which also just clips in to the metal rungs. It's so quick, it's so easy. Realistically, it's probably got a pitch time of about two and a half minutes maximum. It's just like, bum, 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 done. <laughs> um, and then once you've done that, the outer, you fling it on the top. Again, you've got the metal rungs, you click them in to the bottom of the poles where everything's now already nice and tight, nice and in place. There's nothing to tie. It's just clip, 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 done. <laughs> the only thing that I find a little bit fiddly and potentially could have been somewhat helpful to have some markings on is the outer, just for a sense of direction, because it's a bit of a like chuck it on and try and figure out which way around it goes you know you could put the door on the wrong side because obviously the door of the outer needs to match the door of the inner and it's just a bit like ah, where does it go and I can imagine on a really windy uh, afternoon when you're trying to pitch and it's raining or the sun is going down it can just be a little bit frustrating I would probably find it a bit frustrating because <laughs> you can't pitch these things together um, as an inner and an outer and you can't put the outer up by itself so that's something to bear in mind sort of pros and cons of the, the system here but if you do think that uh, you'll be absolutely fine pitching the inner first in the conditions that you're going to be in on the trail that you're going to be in then I think this is a fantastic tent because the pros of this tent is that pretty much the entire thing of the inside is made of uh, insect proof mesh which is fantastic because that means you have so much ventilation and that means you're very very unlikely to get a uh, higher condensation levels so something I struggle with in some of my tunnel design tents is condensation because there are three edging four season tents um, and they haven't got this much mesh <laughs> so basically as we're breathing out we're breathing out moisture it gets trapped inside of the tent the temperature difference outside and inside creates condensation on the inside of the tent and it's the bane of many uh, campers lives but this tent i've heard fantastic reports that condensation is so minimal um, obviously it helps and depends on where you pitch and how you pitch but that's something to really really bear in mind um, so i love that about this tent just the amount of message me message mesh edge <laughs> that is a technical term <laughs> um so that's that's the first part of sort of how we pitch this tent so it's freestanding you don't need pegs however as you can see there are guy lines so these are 1.8 millimeter guy lines they have a nice little metal rung um, as a tensioner so you pull that up or push it down to either tighten or loosen it which is super super nice so you've got one on the front here you've got one either side and you've got one on the back as well so that's four guy lines so you can use four pegs if you want to and the ideal thing about having just these four pegs is it really just helps to pull out the corners and therefore maximize um, the space uh, around your head in the tent which is great but then you can also if you want to peg out the four corners of the uh, tent itself because you know where the metal rungs are you can peg those out and then the door you can peg that out as well so you can very quickly go from four to many more pegs <laughs> um, so it, it i think that's probably where the weight differentiates we talked about the weight being either 1.12 or slightly more i think it depends on how many pegs you take quite frankly <laughs> so that's something to bear in mind there um, and and, you know, it's always nice to carry pegs, I think, as an emergency. Um, and I think it can just make for a slightly more peaceful night's sleep when you're using a freestanding tent because you know that it's really not going to blow away. <laughs> so that's that's ideal. So the next thing I want to talk about is the door. So let's start to get into the usability of this tent uh, when it comes to, right, you pitched it up, what next? <laughs> so as you can see, I have completely removed the front door. There is no porch here because it's gone. <laughs> so this is what MSR call stargazing mode. Rather romantic, don't you think? <laughs> so you can completely roll the entire door back. And I have to say, flipping love that. <laughs> How cool is it? It's almost like you're bivying, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> um, 
so if I just unclip it here, if I can do it with one hand, you've got this little uh, plastic toggle which goes into the circular loop um, and it folds away. So you can see you've got this massive door and I can disappear. Goodbye. <laughs> so that's one option uh, when it comes to using the door. If you've got nice conditions, if you're in the Alps or something, you've got beautiful sunset, you can open up the whole outer thing and just enjoy it, which I think is amazing. If I just <clears throat> shimmy over a second, what we can see now is um, we have this almost piece of guy line rope attached to the central section of the door. Now this is designed that the guy line goes through it and then it's sort of held at tension points with the guy line. So imagine that's there and then you can zip up the rest of the door here or roll it back to that halfway point. It's a bit difficult now because I've obviously unplugged it, uh, unplugged, unclipped it. But you can roll it back so then you've got sort of one side entrance point here. And that's really nice because if you've got the wind coming from one direction, you can stay sheltered um, in your tent but uh, still have sort of outside access, which I think is super great. So I love that there's some kind of, I don't know, variety that you can use with regards to the door. Have a porch, not have a porch. Have a door, not have a door. You know what I mean? <laughs> so if I just roll this thing up a second, we can talk about the fact that, actually whilst I'm rolling this up, you know, I'm nearly done. There we go, never mind. <laughs> right. Now that that's rolled back up out of the way, um, <laughs> I can't demonstrate, but the, the again, the nice thing about this door is MSR have thought a lot about ventilation again. So when we're sleeping, one of the best things we can do to minimise condensation is just keep things open, unzipped. Unless insects and critters are going to get in, it's a very, very good idea. So this is a double zip, the door, so you can zip it down from the top um, just to create a bit of a um, airflow movement space at the top which I think is great or you can zip it closed and protect yourself from the elements and the rain if it's coming down so that's really really nice and then on the other side of the tent we've got kind of what um, I don't think this is what MSR call their gutter I'm not really sure what they call a gutter there's something on the on the website description of this tent which they call a gutter I'm like a gutter <laughs> It's a very funny word, first of all, but where is the gutter? <laughs> uh, but ultimately, there's kind of like a little peepy window on the back, which is quite nice. And again, that just aids ventilation. Warm air goes up and it can escape quite easily from this tent. So by keeping the front door unzipped at the top and having the backside sort of propped open, you can really have maximum ventilation, which I think is amazing. And that's obviously going to aid your uh, experience in slightly colder conditions where it's warm inside, cold outside, get condensation you get the point so the final thing i can talk about on the outside of the tent and then we can finally get into it <laughs> um, is the outer it doesn't pull particularly low to the ground and this is where sort of that three season comes into balance against the four season four season tents very often the outer comes right down to the ground so if you get spin drift or rain bouncing back up it's not going to come inside of your tent this tent has a massive gap from the outer to the ground and that's again fantastic aids ventilation harking on about that a lot at the moment uh, but that's something else to bear in mind msr have been very very clever in designing this tent for sort of hotter colder conditions and just maximizing that ventilation but when it comes to those colder wetter conditions it's not going to perform as well as a slightly higher ranking season tent or a different design tent altogether so that's enough about that let's go inside of the tent now i think i, I don't want to talk about ventilation ever again <laughs> so what we can see is uh, we've got a mesh door first of all here and on the top and then the white is just very very thin um, quite soft fabric actually <laughs> uh, we've got again a double zip so um, you can open it and just have a little gap for ventilation obviously you can do that at the top so you can have a top open top open of the inner and the outer um, but just to match the awesomeness of the outer door the inner door pretty much the whole thing opens and it's really really cool and once you peg this back look if i get this out of the way ugh, also nice and easy glove friendly we can get in and just be like well it's rather nice isn't it <laughs> just enjoy the view like very nice film some otters and watch some golden eagles you know what i mean it's really cool <laughs> Um, I like this a lot. I think it's a really, really good design uh, for enjoying landscapes. Um, 
And what you can also see is, as I'm sat here, I'm actually squashing the bathtub design. So underneath my legs, we've got the ground sheet. Um, and MSI have been very clever in having a very, very high uh, bathtub design. So bathtub design is essentially the ground sheet just coming up slightly higher. So if there is any running or standing water, it's not going to infiltrate into your tent, which you really don't want. Had that, flipping sucks. <laughs> Do not recommend that ever. Um, so it comes up nice and high, and that's obviously really great in wetter conditions. And it doesn't really matter if you squash it down, because there's obviously a little bit of give in the tent. Um, so that's kind of that. Now I'm going to bring the camera a little bit closer, or rather, sorry, I'm going to bring you guys a little bit closer, and we'll have a look inside and see what you think. Okay, welcome to my humble abode. So this is the tent it's very, very, very basic. So there are no pockets to speak of. Sometimes tents have sort of pockets here. You can shove stuff in. There is no washing line to speak of. However, there are these little toggles. So you could tie a washing line up if you want to. Um, and that, there's, li there's literally nothing in here. It's just a bit of a coffiny shaped design. I'm sure my friend won't mind me putting my boots in. So if I just get in you can see there's not a huge amount of space here and I think potentially that is why MSR have been so generous with the door porch space because if you're stuck in this thing it's not going to be the most fun you've ever had that being said I am five foot seven and I can well and truly sit up here and I have a hat on me. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Like, there is a lot of headroom in this tent. So what you don't have in width, you certainly do have in height. And what I'm going to do, just to show you, really show you how it feels, if I can just close this thing. Thank you. <laughs> this is the door shut now. Like, it's not awful, you know? There's... I can... I can stretch... <laughs> Um, and not touch the outer either because the outer, uh, the way that the sort of central pole up here works is that um, it pushes the outer away from the inner. So there is space. So you can push the outer up. Goodness me. You can push the inner <laughs> and not touch the outer. So that's kind of cool. And as you can see now that I'm in here, really is all mesh as well, isn't it? Like mesh, 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 bathtub, ground sheet. <laughs> um so it doesn't feel as bad as it looks like it it, it is quite coffiny but it's also not if that makes any sense whatsoever now what i want to do is get my stuff in here because i think that's going to be the most lifelike um thing to see of of what this tent is like actually on the trail so i'm just going to get my roll mat and sleeping bag out i'm going to bring my rucksack in and we'll see how it feels then because right now it's just me my hat and my walking boots and uh it's very unlikely that tower is going to be on the trail. Okay, so I'm rapidly running out of daylight here, but I think you get the point. <laughs> this is my rucksack. I didn't even bother getting my sleeping bag out. This is my wide thermo rest, and uh, it's completely touching both sides of the tent. So if I put my rucksack at my at the head end of the tent then it kind of frees up space at the feet end. And I think what I'd do is I'd sleep on my rucksack, keep some of my gear at the foot end, and then keep a shed load of stuff in the porch. And I think realistically, that's my <laughs> summary piece with this tent. It's all about how you use it. It's all about systems. As with every piece of kit and every system uh, that we use on the trail, um, is personal preference. And, you know, undoubtedly my favourite thing about this tent is this massive, massive wide open door space like if you're in a landscape where you can use this mate it's so cool <laughs> and i i think this tent is extraordinarily well built like there is no compromise on the the design i think it, it's super super cool um the thing i think i would struggle with the most is the width i am somebody who keeps everything inside of my tent bar my stinky walking boots and wet gear but i know a lot of people don't keep anything in their tent except their sleeping system so it really is personal preference and i think you know this tent will thrive in some conditions and not in others some locations and not in others but it's also a lot of down to how you pitch it and where you pitch it so it's just about getting out there trying things learning from experience and having a blast along the way um 
I think it's very, very easy to overcomplicate kit. It's very easy to overcomplicate tents. But if this is a tent that appeals to you, my suggestion is just give it a go. Um, it's a really, really great tent and you will learn to thrive around it. And if something really isn't working for you, find a way around it. Um, we'll try another piece of kit, swap things, whatever, you'll find a way. Um, so I do hope this video has been helpful. The idea is that it is a bit of a waffly talk through of some of the different things that I like and don't like about this tent. Um, and, uh, you know, I've spent thousands of nights on the trail and I can really see what would work for me and what wouldn't. Um, and I just hope it, it's been helpful for you to be able to apply it um, to your own sort of shopping experience if you're looking to get this tent and take it out into the season ahead. So let me know below if you do use an MSR tent. I'm very interested to hear from you which one it is. How do you get on? I probably missed something out because it almost always happens. But I want to say thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's now getting dark, so it's uh, pretty much time to pack up and go. Um, I'm looking forward to spending a night in this thing very, very soon. I'll report back with how it goes. And until next time, enjoy your adventures and stay wild. I'll see you soon.